Hey, it's Greg from Scholar Farms. And I've been talking a lot about the need for ground truthing in drone data and lining up what happens in the drone and the imagery with what's happening on the ground with the plants. We've been mostly focused on agriculture, but today I wanted to put my scientific cap on and think about the role of drones for scientific research. So whether you're an ecologist or a geologist or an environmental consultant even, uh, this would be relevant for you and the rest of you may find it interesting. So in ecology, there are lots of long-term experiments that are out there. And perhaps one of the most iconic experiments out there is the big biodiversity experiment up in Minnesota at Cedar Creek, at the LTER in Cedar Creek. And if you open any ecology textbook, you'll see uh, this experiment in there. And this experiment was set up in the early 90s by Dave Tillman and some of the other researchers. And they were interested in the role of biodiversity in how ecosystems function. So we're we're losing biodiversity at an unprecedented rate. And so what's the importance of that for how these systems function? So they planted this big experiment with lots of different numbers of plant species in each plot. So some plots had no species, they were controls. Some had just a single species, some had two, four, eight, or even up to 16 species in these plots. And so there have been tons of PhDs and master's degrees and lots of undergraduate student projects in these plots. But what's interesting to me is using drones as a new transformative tool for time series data, particularly on plant uh, experiments just like this. And so what I wanted to do today is just look at a little bit of data from Cedar Creek and look at some of those relationships and correlations. And the hope is to get you excited about adopting this technology, using it in your field research for the summer, and then to think about new and novel questions that this technology might facilitate. So let's, I'll see you in the screencast and we'll look at some data. Okay, so here's Cedar Creek, and I'll go ahead and zoom in on the flight path over the experiment. Each of those red dots is a photo that was taken or a picture that was taken with a camera. It was done in a couple of flight paths, and here are the results. So this is an ortho mosaic, so it's a processed image uh, that is taken of all the photos processed together and then corrected for perspective. And so you can see all the plots here. You can see here there's some ladders down there that they use to stretch across to weed all of the plots in the summertime. Uh, they hang over, and, and that way they're not disturbing the plots. But what's clear here is all the, the differences among the treatments. That's pure, pretty obvious from going from 0 to 16 species. So you can see some of those bare patches in there that are control plots and just clear variation using color imagery uh, and really valuable information for the different treatments. We can also do a 2.5D digital elevation model. So this is looking at terrain across the site. And you can see actually there's some slight differences across the experiment in terrain. Over here, there's some higher areas here, just slightly. It could just be a couple of centimeters. Uh, and then it slopes downward uh, into this greener area. So that's some valuable information too that you get from drone data is that terrain data. You can look at slope or contour lines. When we look at the multispectral side then, here's the red band, so plants are absorbing a lot of red and you can see that uh, it really amplifies the differences among the plots in the amount of red light that they're absorbing. So chlorophyll absorbs a lot of red, but we can, and then it reflects a lot of near-infrared. So here's the near-infrared band and I can zoom in a little bit on this. And what always strikes me is that from the reflectance data of near-infrared, you can also see pretty clear differences in the structure of these different plots. So you can spot the trees or different heights amongst the plants. So we take the ratio of those two and then we create an index. So here's NDVI, it's a kind of a hallmark index. And this really shows us differences among the plots in productivity and we can change the visualization of NDVI. I can ch change the number of categories, but it's typically going from zero to one. Uh, and then you really play around with the visualization uh, in terms of the colorization of the map. And so here we can see bright green then is the treatment plots that have the most productivity. And then these bare plots here are, have no species in them. Um, and so it's really striking when we look at the index values, how we can see the differences in the treatments. And this is at the peak of the growing season, but you might think early versus late in the season, how did the patterns change? Uh, I'll, I'll change the colorization here. So here I have a thermal map. Uh, this isn't true thermal, it's just a thermal colorization. But the reason I like this is you can think about a heat map of productivity is really what you're getting with these data and it's really valuable. Uh, and actually I like this color a little bit better from the red um, to the green. But let's put the two side by side so you can look at the difference between the index map and the colors and really compare them. 
So we have the RGB on the right, and then on the left you can see the NDVI values. And just really clear differences pop out a little more than just the color imagery. Uh, and we can then take the average NDVI and we can look at some data. So let's do that now. So here I plotted just the number of plant species, 0 to 16, and you can see now it has a positive relationship with the amount of biomass. So this is average plot level biomass from 2001 to 2014. This is an iconic graph. It's been shown lots and lots of times. The more plant species you have, the more biomass you have in the plots for a range of different reasons I won't get into here. But let's look then at the NDVI values, the average NDVI per plot. And we see that same thing, that same positive relationship. So number of plant species on the x-axis, NDVI values, this is average from the imagery that we collected. And so you can really see that similar pattern. It's really tracking productivity out in the field. And that's a great example of ground truthing your data. And if we look at the relationship between the two, so here's mean biomass plotted against those NDVI values, you see that strong positive relationship between NDVI from the flown drone data and the actual harvested data uh, that was collected from the plots. And this is consistent across the diversity treatment. So the different colors are different numbers of plant species. And so this is just one example of ground truthing. There's a lot of other uh, data that we could collect or plot out here. For example, if we go to the biodiversity website here at Cedar Creek, then we can scroll down and we actually have access to all the raw data that has been made publicly available. And so you can look at, for example, 10 years of data of root biomass, or we can look at the 22 years worth of data of above ground plant biomass. We can look at carbon and nitrogen. So lots of different information here that we could plot our drone data against for ground truthing if we want to know how we can predict multispectral imagery and how, we, how it compares to nutrient content or uh, nutrient cycling or carbon budgets or all sorts of different questions. Uh, here's the number of insects were collected for over 10 years in every single plot. And so lots of information that could be plotted against the drone data. And that's not just for the biodiversity experiment. There's actually tons of data that has been centralized and deposited for a lot of long-term experiments. So experiments on nitrogen deposition, on fire, on succession, all sorts of long-term experiments going on at Cedar Creek where you could take old kind of historical data and apply it with new tools such as drones in novel ways. And so interesting questions will arise. Okay, so that's Cedar Creek. And I know that you're thinking, great, I have a new tool. I can collect some time series data and some imagery and capture things like NDBI or other vegetation indices. But what new and novel questions can I really ask with drones? And I'd say, well, that's really up to your imagination. The direction that the drone industry is headed is really about not just about the drones and autonomous flight and repeatability, it's also about the analytics of the imagery and thinking about machine learning, artificial intelligence, how can we process these data in real time, and how can we deal with change detection. And as a scientist, change detection is one of the most fundamental questions, whether you're thinking about global climate change, loss of species, invasion of new species, all these major questions that scientists are interested in, drones are a novel tool that may help address them. But if you're not out there using them, then you won't really understand the power of the technology and how we can ask new and novel questions today and tomorrow and the next day uh, and adopting these new tools. And so my name's Greg, I'm with Scholar Farms. I encourage you to check out our website. We have a whole web master class on mapping plants with drones and I want you to get excited about this technology and start thinking about how would I use them in my lab in my research project today so we'll see you soon